Thank you very much, Roy. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, I am also honored to uh, be here and share part of our uh, story over here, which uh, goes back even to uh, the time of uh, one of our colleagues who is with us here, Ben Usu Mensa, that, uh, where this terminal was started with him, actually, and, uh, and it evolved. Uh, I would like to share with you a presentation and um, bear with me, I want to launch it now and uh, then I will take you through uh, <clears throat> various slides in this uh, presentation. Uh, can you see it? Uh, yes, is it we visible can. now? Yeah, yes. excellent, yeah. good stuff. I mean, basically, uh, this is the uh, new Terminal 3 at Tama Port. Uh, operating at night and this uh, night picture is to so show that we are operating 24-7 uh, day and night you know and uh, and we are we are uh, <laughs> we are very much led so to speak uh, uh, on it basically Meridian Port Services is a joint venture company and uh, it's uh, in partnership where the partnership is between Ghana Ports and Harbour Authority APM Terminal and Borough Africa Logistics, you know. Um, Meridian Port Services took a concession to build and operate a container terminal in the year 2004 and completed the construction um, in um, 2007 and it has been operating container terminal in Tama Port, Port since 2007. At the start, the uh, ships that were calling Tama Port were uh, in the range of 1,500 to 2,000 TEUs, and eventually we grew to what was called the WAFMAX, the 5,000 TEU class vessels, and this was the biggest ship that we could handle at the uh, old harbor basin, you know, uh, that's Terminal 2. Um, uh, the biggest because we had the 11 and a half meter draft, the biggest because the crane out, uh, outreach was up to the 15th row on a ship. So basically we were uh, uh, kind of uh, not handicapped per se, but uh, uh, the port was built in the 60s and it was uh, expanded in the early 2000s and modified, but it got to a stage where this infrastructure, you know, uh, is not able to meet the future uh, uh, generations of, uh, or the new generations uh, 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 of vessels. The new classes are getting larger, deeper, wider, and uh, we had more than one dimension to worry about. We needed deeper water, we needed uh, bigger cranes to go over the ship, and we needed uh, also uh, bigger cranes to reach the outreach, you know, beyond that. So with all of these uh, challenges, um, you know, there was no choice but to go outside the port and build a new harbor basin. Uh, to just show you, this used to be the Tama port uh, uh, before, you know, MPS coming in. This is the beginning of uh, the clearance of the RAND and you see STS cranes uh, arrived. And uh, though there is a couple of Navy vessels there, but some containers started to take shape at the container terminal. Eventually it looked uh, like this and we operated it from 2007 to 2019. Then uh, <clears throat> basically the new project emerged and uh, the new project was built or the new harbor basin was built to the west of Tama Port, you know, and uh, uh, it is within the GPHA master plan and uh, MPS was concessioned or is concessioned to build and operate four berths inside this new harbor basin. And also we have built it with a breakwater, 3,500 meters, you know, that goes a kilometer and a half into the sea, claiming vast space of water, you know, uh, south of the key wall to allow for future expansion as the peninsula on the inner side of the breakwater. The launched capacity of this terminal is 2,000 TEU and uh, in, um, and we have uh, uh, three berths totaling 1,000 meters, and there is 400 meters more that is currently completed and under construction. But basically, phase one was 1,000 meters, and phase two is another 400. The draft is 16 meters at all time, you know, uh, regardless to uh, the uh, tide, and uh, we have equipped it 
at the startup with seven STS screens with 23 um, rows uh, outreach and two STS screens that were relatively uh, uh, new, just a few years old, uh, that we brought from Terminal 2 into Terminal, uh, from Terminal 2 to Terminal 3. They have 15, uh, 15 rows outreach. And then a two mobile hub cranes that have 15 rows outreach. And we have 29 electric RTGs, rubber tired gantry cranes. And there is about 40 to 50 actually at the moment. Uh, uh, tractor units running around shunting containers from ship side to stack and vice versa. And of course, we have an ambition with all of this capacity is to find uh, uh, more uh, uh, containers in terms of transshipment and create a hub over here. Currently, the market in Tamil is a thousand TEU, uh, sorry, a million TEU throughput capacity, and we have a capacity of two million TEU throughput capacity double that of our market, and we think that we're going to be filling up that quite soon. The terminal was uh, built, obviously, state-of-the-art infrastructure equipped with the latest cranes and equipment, and also technology played a major role. We have always operated from the start, uh, um, the op Navis operating system, and we upgraded to N4 as soon as it was released. But what we have added we have incorporated a new gate system, fully automated from in, end to end, you know, from entry to exit. The gates are all automated. Basically, uh, we have a truck appointment system, which helps making the gate automated. The truck appointment system fix. You can book uh, a truck, which is already pre-registered, and a driver, which is already pre-registered. And at the registration, Drivers and trucks are inspected, checked, and they receive the uh, induction for safety and the flow, et cetera. We have biometric access control for drivers. We have license plate recognition, LPR. We have optical character recognition technology, OCR, way bridges, scanners, and scanners on import and export, and we scan 100%. They are drive-through scanners, sophisticated scanners, six of them, three on the in-gate, three on the out-gate. And we have RFID fitted on all the trucks to ensure there is paperless flow and to ensure that there is actually a seamless flow also and all interlinked with our TOS as well as with the custom systems. So we upgrade each other and we check each other. For example, a truck drive through is uh, uh, his biometrics read from his finger. The RFID reads the truck and license plate recognition recognizes the truck. He drives through, if he has a container, he goes through the scanner. The scanner has OCR and LPR and takes, uh, reads the number of the container, queries the custom system. And if, uh, if there is an export box, it will put the commodity on the picture, takes an image of what's the content and present it to the customs officer for him to verify that it is the description matches the image that he sees as content of the container. If it's empty, it will go through. If there is something else, it will flag it that declared empty, but there is something in it. From there, they go to the OCR. OCR reads the container number, takes an image from high definition image of the container, top, sides, front, back, including the truck, and then allow it to proceed to gate. At the entry gate of the terminal where the drop or pick happens, small ticket is issued to tell him you are, you go to area one row three so and so and then he will go straight to that point under an rtg and then drop or pick the container the whole terminal is a charted 3d matrix with the differential global positioning system each container location has a coordinate and these coordinates are logged into the TOS system and that's how we can track and trace our containers within the yard the container terminal uh, looks like this. It's quite big. As you can see, there is three berths over here, and the fourth one is under construction. Actually, it has been completed, and uh, now very soon, you know, we will launch the pavement on this side. Now, I mean, in all of this, you realize that our challenge was the infrastructure. Our challenge was the superstructure. We didn't have a port capable of handling the current vessels that run. We didn't have a port that has all the technology to make it 
through the growth, you know, the more volume you handle, the more automation you require, you know, and reading instead of tallying by pen, then the OCR comes and tally containers for you, et cetera. That enable us to handle, you know, to go above the million TEU capacity. You know, it is a requirement. So there was a couple of handicaps here and there, and the response to it is to invest in infrastructure, invest in bigger equipment, machinery, invest in IT, uh, uh, in IT solutions and technology. But you cannot do the three also without investing in the human resource itself, which we have done that as well. Basically, uh, um, what ports bring is not only to the shareholders or the investors, also brings back a lot to the economy that they exist and the town and the country and the region that they exist within. I mean, the terminal performance is key. You know, uh, terminal capacity is important. You know, uh, we didn't have the capacity. Now we upgraded into much, much higher capacity. The vessel si size was a, and capacity was, um, a handicap. We couldn't handle big ships because uh, big ships could not berth. Therefore, ships like the WAF Max, which was we were able to handle it operationally, but we couldn't get it in fully laden because it requires 14 meters draft. We had 11 and a half, which meant the ship had to go and lighten up somewhere else and then come to us. In doing so, we become second, third port of call, which is adds to the cost of the freight when you are first port of call, better transit better freight, et cetera. And uh, the capacity of the ship, the bigger ships are deployed, the less, you know, the cost of the freight, obviously, there is some form of economic scale that the shipping line will pass on to their customers. The terminal productivity is important. You know, when you bring bigger ships, of course, the shipping lines wants to turn this ship around. Uh, we were actually terminal to the fastest terminal on the West Coast in Africa, and we are now by far the fastest. Uh, we have the best birth move uh, per hour and uh, obviously the fastest turnaround. We have overcome many challenges in there. It will take me the whole day to speak about it in details. But uh, what we have achieved is the line of shipping <clears throat> connectivity. We have today in Tama direct services. You know, we have in Tama today all the shipping lines that come to West Africa, all the container shipping lines that come to West Africa call at Tama. We have the biggest vessels currently that call West Africa call at Tama. We have the 15,000 TEU class, you know, coming into the port, you know, three times the size of what we handled in a handicap environment is coming to us on weekly service at the moment. The call frequency, all lines have a weekly, sometimes some lines they have two calls or three calls per week into Tama. So we have started to see more and more traffic, you know, and we are heading towards, we have, we will jump the million TEU bracket. And uh, when we started, uh, Ben, the throughput was quarter million, and now it is 1.1 million. So it's quite a leap, you know, in the decade that uh, we have operated. The number of vessel calls obviously is increasing by the fact that we have added a third berth to the two original two. The gross value added to the economy is immense. You know, first, you know, the the trade volume is growing, you know, uh, uh, with us being able to uh, serve more than one geography, you know, as a port. Uh, and uh, also we are, with the connectivity, we're connecting the Ghana importer as well as the Ghana exporter to new markets that they can reach. I mean, I don't want to talk about the Africa free continental trade zone with our, our area, because this is not yet, uh, uh, the fruit is not yet ripe, you know, but certainly when it ripens, you know, we're going to see quite a lot of economy, you know, boom in Ghana here in particular, because we will have the connectivity. We have the capacity to handle the traffic and the freight in and out. We can easily just add by adding superstructure cranes into the yard to gear up to three and a half million. The same infrastructure that we built and operating with a capacity of two million, we can gear it up to three and a half million by just adding more cranes on the waterfront and within the yard. The employment from trade is going to boom. You know, I mean, I'll give you an example. Uh, uh, we have saved some costs. Uh, that's the trade costs I'm going back uh, on sea freight. Uh, when we removed the congestion, Tama was ranging in, in like the three to 500 uh, uh, 
euro bracket as a congestion surcharge. I think Lagos now is within the uh, 1,000. We removed that. You know, imagine if in today's time you have like uh, half a million TEU input and there is 500 euro or 1,000 uh, euro uh, uh, surcharge. That's quite a huge amount of money, half a billion, quarter billion dollar or euro, leaving the euro economy going to the shipping line to pay for the losses that the shipping line is incurring at your anchorage. We have waived that, that cost vanished. The congestion surcharge gone out of Tama long ago, and it will never come back as long as we have and we operate such a facility. Storage and dwell time dropped with this searching for container we can't find it gone long term ago evaporated. So basically dwell time was shaved. Uh, customs coming to, to the game with a good customs system and this uh, uh, freight forwarders clearing agents, they're performing their services from their office, interacting electronically with everybody. That have cut dwell time, cost has gone. Transport, truck turnaround today is under one hour in Tama port. From entry to exit, we load on this, of course, if he's subject to inspection or something, the green channel container should not spend more than one hour in the port, you know. So this is reducing, the truckers can do two trips a day in, in and out of the port if they are doing import. You know, if they're doing export, drop off and leave, they can do a lot more. So transport cost is bound to go down and other costs. So basically, um, the growth of the port uh, services uh, 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 and uh, is leading to the growth also of the uh, uh, port service providers automatically. There will be more freight forwarders, there will be more truckers, there will be more and more and more. So economically, it's a huge. According to a study that we, we, we did, a port uh, like this should actually bring um, a gross value in the range of 1 billion per year for the first uh, like five years. If you take that and based on the uh, GDP per capita, you're looking at the job value in the range of half a million jobs being created within this economy or a billion uh, dollar you know, per year for the next five years. So it's quite immense such investment in ports. As I mentioned, we are, we are currently, you know, all the shipping lines, you know, that call West Africa come to us. We have the deepest draft that's up to 16. And then we have the lowest anchorage time of all ports. So basically that makes us a potential hub, you know, where first port of call, heavy ships, high volume, you know, for Ghana, uh, and also high volume for transshipment can be handled efficiently and speedily. So that becomes a potential place for transshipment and for creating an industrial hub within the west coast of Africa. Tama, as you can see, we are on the, the name Meridian Port Services comes from the Meridian Line, which happens to cross our pavement, you know. Part of our development is uh, in the east of, uh, uh, has coordinates of east and part is west and the meridian rock sits right on our pavement you know basically and uh, that is the center of the world and we are the closest to the equator we have traffic coming from the far east middle east around the cape and into west africa and from europe mid middle east and also from the americas so there is a good geography and today we are developing few transshipment solutions with several lines and we have quite a good success even we're doing Europe to Far East through Tama and Far East to Europe through Tama, West Africa to Europe through Tama and Europe to through Tama. So it's quite a good success. Africa is a locked up continent. There is a lot of corridors that needs to be serviced. And, uh, and we are focusing in our transshipment uh, on uh, maybe the coastline, but behind the coastline, there is quite a number of corridors. I mean, if we look East and West within, uh, I would say 2,000 nautical miles or 1,000 nautical miles in, a, uh, in each direction, we would cover quite a range from Conakry to uh, Douala or to Cameroon. That's within our efficient range to cover with partnership with a good feeding service or a shipping line. And uh, that 
in itself creates market for the shipping line. Some shipping lines cannot reach certain ports because it's congested. That's why they avoid it. Some shipping lines, they cannot reach there because it's too shallow. So they have to transship the cargo elsewhere. Some ports are uh, just no volume sufficient from the range that they come. But Mr. if that Mr. Happens, uh, it will be fine. And uh, we have few models you know, of success around the world. I've listed a few, like in Malaysia, in uh, Morocco, Tangier, and Oman, and Salalah. West Africa is really important, and uh, we represent a good number of people and a great G uh, a GDP as well to, uh, you know, put ourselves in. So I encourage everybody, you know, to uh, 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 find solutions and, uh, uh, and basically overcome their handicaps, whatever it is, through investment and through determination. Thank you very much, and, uh, and I hope uh, I didn't overstay. <laughs> and uh, all back to you, Roy.